Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another fantastic episode of the Business Creators Radio Show. My name is Adam Homey. I am your host, and I am honored by your wise decision to tune in today. Here at the Business Creators Radio Show, we help you win at the game of business and marketing so you can thrive from the intersection of your brilliance and your passion. With our guest experts, we provide you a breadth and depth of topics relevant to you as a business creator to help you to move things forward. And as the name says, we are business creators. We have our entrepreneurs, small business owners, local business owners. We have the marketing and business coaches, consultants, and mentors. We have the folks who help others create their businesses, and we have the do-it-yourselfers, like to have your own hands on the levers. If you're one or more of the above, and many of our listeners who tune in every week are all of the above, including me, take a moment, explore episodes, discover how we can serve you, www.businesscreatorsradioshow.com. Furthermore, check us out on networks like iTunes. Be sure to subscribe. Every five-star rating is greatly appreciated. Helps us serve more business creators just like you. And when you subscribe, you'll not only get immediate access to over 250 episodes, you also get fresh content fed to you automatically every single week. Does that sound good or does that sound good? All right, so today... Today, we have an interesting topic. The title of it is Diagnosing Side Issues One Bug at a Time. And maybe thinking, why are we going to have this type of techie sounding or pest control sounding topic on the business creator's radio show? And, you know, I thought about that. When this opportunity first came across my desk, I looked at it, and for a moment I wasn't quite sure if I was going to bring this on. And then I decided, no, no, not only am I going to bring this on? I need to bring this on and share it with you. As a business creator myself, as someone who is um, an entrepreneur, as someone who is a marketing coach, consultant, and mentor, as somebody who helps others create their businesses, and as someone who likes to have my own hands on the levers, I find myself getting perplexed by tech things. I like to fix things. I'm a tinkerer. I, when I was a kid, I used to take engines apart and put them back together, like the lawnmower engine. I used to take radios apart and put them together again. I, I love tinkering, and when something is not working, urgh, it bugs me. That's why I would make a very poor website developer, I guess, because I would uh, get sometimes hung up on these things, and I wouldn't even be able to delegate it, because it's something in my nature that wants to fix bugs. And that's why with today's topic, we're going to show you an easier way to deal with bugs. And to help us with that, I am going to introduce to you Kirk Deus of TheBugSquasher.com. When I first saw that URL, I thought we were talking about an exterminator. We were going to learn about their best practices for local marketing. And then I looked at it, and I'm thinking, wow, this actual topic is very, very, very exciting. So, Kirk, now that you know the history of my thought process, come on in and let's mind melt. Weather's fine. Awesome. Well, first, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. And I am prepared for the show to be absolutely epic with the both of us talking about this. So sure, where do we sure. begin? Um, I can I can tell well, you me... how the – oh, go ahead. So excited. I know we're both so excited here. We're going to have one of those very dynamic interviews. So basically, let me just share first uh, for our audience, Kirk Dates is an entrepreneur and founder of two companies, Treehouse51.com and TheBugSquasher.com. And he's worked with brands around the globe and featured in Forbes on podcasts like this one, YouTube channels, and more. He's got a little something on his YouTube channel he's going to share with us towards the end. Uh, so that's for our listeners. And for those of you who are Googling the man or binging the man or yahooing the man, looking to find more about him, uh, let me take a step back. And this is what we always do here on the Business Creators Radio Show for those who are new to us. Those who have been with us for a while have noticed that some of my inflections and some of my greetings have been changed a little bit because I'm experimenting with things. I'm always experimenting with things. I'm a tinkerer. I like to play with things, make them better, fix bugs. And what we like to do here is we like to take a step back and get to know our guests a little bit and what brought them from the intersection of from where they began to where they are today at the intersection of their brilliance and passion helping business creators just like you. So, Kirk, if you could tell us a little bit about that for yourself, that would be great. Sure. Uh, Actually, my background, uh, many moons ago, I started in screenwriting, and that's where it all started. I started um, just uh, writing scripts, stories, TV scripts, and from there, landed a couple ghostwriting jobs, writing for different websites, eventually working my way to different ad agencies and companies, 9to5, 
during that process, I met all these talented marketing people. And I also had a bunch of film friends. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to make this creative hub and just bring the marketing world, which generally uh, isn't as creative as it can be, and bring these film guys who are super creative but don't really follow the data all the time, bring these two mindsets together. And that's how I started a Treehouse 51. Right, right. So how about the bug squasher? The bug squasher, uh, that was, I feel like it was the universe telling us to start this. Um, so the story, <laughs> yeah, the story behind that was we had a client and she was, she was in her 70s or so, and we were making a website for her. And we sent her this website, and she emailed me back. Um, it was like 10,000 words, single space, <laughs> and in the very middle of the email was the problem. And I was just like, I remember waking up to this thinking, you know, I sent her, I sent her the website day one. I wake up to this email. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is going to be a good day. And I open it and I'm like, oh, Jesus. And I'm just reading this message and she's really just unhappy and frustrated and upset. And somewhere in the middle of the message was the problem. And the worst thing, the worst thing that could happen happened. She didn't say what the URL was. And the, and her website wasn't very small, so I couldn't <laughs> just find it on my own. So I had to ask her. I was like, um, what URL are you talking about? Where is this bug? And the, it was like I kicked her dog. Uh, she ended up calling oh, me. And she was even, yeah, she, she was even more upset. And she's like, how come you don't know this? How come you don't know what's going on? How come you can't fix this? So during the talk, she, she told me what the URL was. And I was like, okay, got it. But now I need to ask you a follow-up question. Are you looking on a Mac, Windows, iPad? You know, are you on Chrome, Firefox? Of course, she was on Internet Explorer. And so there were just all these sex. questions that I – what's that? Internet Explorer 6? Internet Explorer 6? Oh, probably. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. So there's just all these <laughs> things I had to, like, ask her just to diagnose the problem. Um, when you're making websites and issues come up, part of solving those issues is trying to either locate it or try to duplicate the issue. And so in this, in this situation, we're trying to locate it. And so I had to ask her these questions, and it was just, it was so painful. And I just, I, we got off the phone, and I'm, you know, I have to tell the guys, I'm like, so here's what we have to do now. And the change, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember it was just something really small. And when I'm telling the guys the story, you know, she sent me this message, you know, they're cracking up, and they're crying on the inside because every developer, every ad agency, every web company, they have a variation of this story. <laughs> they've, they've gone through similar pains. They've gotten that you late hear me night e You hear me, chocolate? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've gotten the email, the Skype message, the text. So it happens all the time. And so as I was telling the story, I was like, you know, I, I just wish there was a way that we could collect all this information without having to put the client on the spot, without having to have this expectation of them having to know these things. And I don't think it matters that some of this stuff is basic. Like, why should she have to give us this information? And I just was like, you know, just rifting and talking to the guys, and they're like, okay, Kirk, okay. And I just kept going. I was like, no, I'm serious. Like, what if it wasn't um, her responsibility to know this stuff? What if it was on us? What would that world look like if we had to figure this out for ourselves? And that's how it all started. You know, I um, I started just talking to them about it, and I started thinking, you know, it would be great if we could give them this tool where they could take a screenshot, and when they send us that screenshot, they could write on it, and with it, we'd learn all this information about them, like what the URL is, what type of device they're on, um, and then that just exploded into when we had that model of it. I was like, well, now I have to assign the ticket to the guys. I, I want to put tags and categories yeah. and filters and reports. Yeah, yeah. And it just kept just growing and growing like a fire. And and it just ultimately got to a spot where uh, I felt confident enough to, we, to put more money into it, more time and energy, and create the Bug Squasher, make it an official website, and start getting the word out about the product. I love it. Let me uh, share a couple of things with you. Uh, first of all, when you said Internet Explorer, what immediately crossed my mind was Internet Explorer 6. Those of us who have been around for a while, whether you are a web developer or a web designer or you're somebody who hired a web designer, are familiar with back in the day before we were worried about mobile compatibility, which is a cinch by comparison. The big yeah. thing was Internet Explorer 6 capability. Internet Explorer 6 was rated by several outlets that were – reliably incredibly track these things is one of the worst 20 worst softwares of all time 
It was rated on more than one different study. It's one of the 20 worst softwares of all time. It got to the point where even Microsoft said, look, if you're still using 6, get with it and upgrade. I mean, even Microsoft <laughs> wouldn't support the thing after for a while. After a while. And, I can, I can, uh, I can I, back that up, too. I have a access yes, to Google, exactly. Google Analytics for brands across the U.S., and traffic from Internet Explorer is – it's nothing. You know, you're lucky if you right. get like a dozen clicks from there. Right. I mean, I mean, by now, Internet Explorer has largely caught up. So at least it's not this own complete animal. I mean, what you do for other websites will probably work in Internet Explorer. You might have to make little tweaks here and there. But by and large, in my personal opinion, they've largely handled it. But during the day when I had a web design firm, which I owned until 2011 – Boy, oh boy, how, how many projects got held up? The thing was ready to go live, but then the client decides it's not nice enough in Internet Explorer 6. Well, towards the end, when WordPress became a not only a blogging software, but also a software you could use to manage your entire website, including the templating and the design, towards the end, we started uh, we started dealing with Internet Explorer through a very innovative way that we never got questioned on. You want to hear it? Yeah. If the site was on WordPress, we installed a plugin that if somebody attempted to access it through Internet Explorer 6, it said this site is not compatible with Internet Explorer 6. Click here to upgrade. If yeah. it was <laughs> one of the legacy Clever. HTML or PHP sites, we used coding and the HT access to – have the same thing happen. If it was coming from Internet Explorer 6, send them to this page and tell them to get with the times. Uh, we would watch, as you said, Google Analytics and other tracking softwares like Woopra and whatever other one was big back then. I mean, right now everybody's talking about Facebook pixels and such. But we would watch what percentage were coming in through Internet Explorer 6. And my company made the resolution that uh, once this goes below 7%, we just don't care. And I remember the day that I was able to pull up a report that said less than 7% of this site's visitors for the past month used Internet Explorer 6. That's it. We're done. That's awesome. That was our, that was our resolution. Now, today, if you're actually using Internet Explorer 6, I would advise you to go to your nearest computer repair shop and pay $150 for one of those refurbished models they have out in the showroom if you can't afford a new computer or choose not to allocate your funds to a new computer and get something that's a little bit more modern because after a certain period of time, operating systems stopped accepting Internet Explorer 6. If you're actually using IE6, that also tells me how old your operating system is. Seriously. Yeah. Six. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. Right. Oh, man. You guys must have celebrated when that happened. Yeah, and then right after that, we got all the business. So, I mean, it was a double celebration. <laughs> but uh, that's, just, that's just me. So um, let's, uh, let's get into the, um, the bug squasher here a little bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about how this works. And let me tell you a brief anecdote of my own here. And, uh, and for all of our listeners, you know that you know, oftentimes in the shows it feels like I do most of the talking for the first 20 minutes, and then it just becomes an endless stream of the guests talking. That's just how these work out. But here's another anecdote I have um, when I had that firm is at one point we had 43 clients, and we had, uh, I had three people who were primary points of contact for the clients who routinely got ignored by the clients who felt that uh, they should deal with me and only me, no matter how many times I kicked the issue back to the person who's supposed to be their, their first person. And uh, anyway, this issue kept coming up. The, the, the an email would come into us, and it would say, the, the link is broken on the page. That's what it would say. The yeah. link is broken on the page. All right, which page? And then that client yeah. will say, well, I only have five websites, and they only have 40 pages. Don't you know this? Going back to what you said before. And I would say, well, uh, you only have five websites. You only really use the one website, and you're familiar with all of its pages. We have a certain level of familiarity, too, but you have to remember, we're dealing with over 40 other people who have the same, if not more, than you do. Not that we don't know, and we certainly care, but if you want a fast resolution to this issue, the way you modify that email is you say, on domain.com forward slash sales letter, the third claim my access now button right underneath the video of me 
on the rowboat is going to the wrong page. You already know that. You can tell us that, and then we can fix it in five seconds. After a yeah, while, exactly. got to the point where I after got after a while got to the point where I uh, began to. This is the way I'd respond, and I had my other people respond. If uh, if a person who had already been helped in terms of how to properly report an error so that we could efficiently and effectively fix it fast, still gave us this vague information and expected us to just know, uh, the official response was, good to know. Thanks for sharing. Oh. <laughs> like, wait, wait, aren't you going to fix it? Well, you haven't given me anything to fix. You just told me a link's broken. So what's broken? Right. And that got the message through. Now, my understanding of the bug squasher is, and I think you alluded to this, is if there is a bug out there somewhere, it actually helps you diagnose it in a way that the client themselves might not even have to know all this. Am I right about that, or how does this work? Yeah, you're a thousand percent right. So the way that it works is once you have the bug squasher on your website, the client or whomever, they can report a bug. And when they report okay. that bug, it goes back into the bug squasher and we can tell, I can tell you what IP address it's coming from. Um, I can tell you what browser they're on. I can tell you what type of device. And if you have web console errors happening, we actually record that too. So, and that's on top of, you can like upload screenshots. Uh, you can annotate screenshots as well. So you have all that functionality. And the right. reason we did, the reason we did that was well, you know, exactly what we're saying. Like we want to, we want to, take more off the client's plate and just make it as easy to communicate as possible. And we're always looking for ways to up our game. So when, when this was all working and firing and everything's going, I was super excited and the guys are excited. And I was like, guys, this is, this is pretty great what we have. Now let's make it iconic. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? Yeah. So I thought, you know, this is all about streamlining communication. How can we make it easier for everybody to talk to each other and work together? So what's easier than clicking a button? Uh, the next stage is clicking a button where you don't have to type anything. You just hit record. So we figured out a way, and we're going to be adding this. Like that? Yeah. We figured out a way where we're going to be yeah. adding the ability to record bugs. So now if you have, um, let's say, a client who we, – we see this a lot where client, older clients aren't too tech savvy or not really sure. So now it's, it doesn't get any easier. You just hit record, and we can still collect all this information, and we can see the error or whatever it is happening on your screen. So that'll be right. uh, coming out in the not too distant future. That's pretty cool. And I'm speaking as somebody who years and years and years ago um, discovered the power of Camtasia. One of my best clients, one of my top clients, somebody who was with me then, somebody who's with us now, and somebody who's going to be with us forever for as long as they stay in business, which with our help is going to be forever. Is, uh, uh, we were finding that uh, it was sometimes challenging for us to explain things to them. This is somebody who kind of wanted to have his own hands on the levers because he wanted to be able to blog whenever he wanted to and have the blog post have a nice picture on them, know how to rename the picture for search engine purposes, uh, know how to break the paragraphs, and know how to do the hyperlink and set it so that when he clicked on the hyperlink, it opened in a separate tab like you're supposed to, and how to put in the PS and all this other stuff. And we kept trying to get through to him. It's like the, the most important thing is I need to speak with my customers, and I don't want to have to work with anybody else. So I pulled up this thing called Camtasia, and I said, all right, so here's how you do a blog post, step one, step two, step three. And then I didn't hear from him for a good day or so. I thought, oh, boy, he's, he took what I did as sarcasm. Well, <laughs> I heard from him a day later, and he told me, you know that video you sent me the other day? I just showed it to my girlfriend, and she said that this is the best example of customer service she's ever seen in her life, and I have to agree. Thank you. That actually led yeah. to a whole line of business where I would do coaching through Camtasia so you didn't have to be there with me live. So you could pay me to research your issue, get back to you with examples, and film it for you, and then we could schedule a call to answer your questions. I also discovered with clients, especially the ones where everything was done by committee, where if you tried to explain something once, you had to have the same conversation with five different people to answer the same six questions. I learned uh, a little subtle form of pushback, which is, all right, what I have to say, I'm going to record it on Camtasia. I'm going to send it to everybody. And I'm going to say, get back to me with your questions. Let me know what's unclear. Let me know where we need to go from here. And if they 
And if I got into a conversation with them and they started asking a couple questions where I could tell that they hadn't watched the video because I had specifically filmed the video with the idea of explaining these questions in advance, I'd say, did you watch the video? I'd say, well, no, I just wanted to talk to you about it. It's like, okay, you can speak with me all you want. Watch the video. Get back to me. Right, right. Which, which tree you want in video project. communication? Yeah. Oh. I was saying with the Trias 51 video communication has been such a big part of our success with clients, which it blows my mind because I'm the type where it's like I write it out, I have to see the list or I have to see the flow, yeah. um, visual with like mind maps. And yeah. um, about like a year or so ago, we just started, I just started using videos with my team and they were just like in love with it. And I'm like, really? You prefer the video over the flow? And they were like, yeah. And then I was like, okay. Yeah. And then I started using it with clients and We've gotten so much positive feedback from people where it's like, don't email me, just send me the video, which I, again, I'm yeah. like, that's, that's easier for you to look at the video. I would think yes, just yes, looking at the yes, list would yes, be like, okay, yes, it's item yes. seven. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's wild. But yeah, people, and the other thing is yeah. people remember it more. People, um, it's true what they say, like, um, pictures are worth a thousand words. So I don't know what a video is worth, maybe a million, but that sticks with people. People remember like, oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I think it's worth a thousand thousand words, which is a million, if I remember the mathematics correctly. I think you're <laughs> right. And you know, yeah. you, know, you, know, you know what else videos are good for? Is if you have somebody where you are trying to explain something to them and you can't even get half a sentence out before they start debating it or questioning it. So it creates a mind frame of, I'm going to use this video to say what I need to. Then I'm going to sit back. And if you have a hundred questions, I will answer all 100 of your questions. I'll take as much time as you need. But I'm going to get my side out here so that we have it all on the table so we're both on the same page. Exactly. Yeah. Videos where it's at. Yeah. So basically with the bug squasher, getting back to your wonderful technology, is um, – what now, is this bug squasher, is this available to the admins and a common user? So if I were to go on any website that had the bug squasher on it just as a random user and I noticed something was broken, like I'm trying to fill out the order form and it's not working, I can just click that button and film the problem I'm having? So this is a great question and a feature that we thought about, that I thought about extensively, and I, I know you're going to relate to this. Um, in the perfect world, you never touch a live site. You never go in there. You never tweak it. You make all your tweaks on a development or a test website. Now, let me ask you, yeah. in reality, <laughs> does that actually happen? You know, exactly. you know, uh, this is a, fun, it's a fun, funny, funny story. Uh, one of our, another one of our awesome clients, I mean, this is an awesome client. I even uh, wrote great things about this client anonymously inside my book, Groundhog Days and Event on a Business Strategy. And, um, when I first found them, they were already on WordPress, but they had a development version of it and then the live version of it. And then once we came in as the consultant and uh, we got with their web people and we dealt with their uh, – helped them practice minimalism for the sake of maximizing results. And uh, one of the things we said is get rid of dev. All it's doing is taking up your server space, and that's why your, your bandwidth and your file space is maxing all the time because you have two very – copies of the same large site with wordpress you install uh you install duplicate page post you make a copy of it you give that to your clients and then when you want to go live with it you switch urls and right. about three and about three months later the client came back and said whatever happened to dev like what, what the hell do you need dev for we're using wordpress you've already seen about seven times how we've had the web people run things by you where you were looking at something that said, um, you know, domain.com forward slash sales letter hyphen draft 01. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah and, and yeah, and I have heard this, and other guests on the Business Creators Radio Show have said, you never do anything to a live site, you always do it on a development site. And you and I both know that in our 24 7 instant response world, that's a bunch of bull cookies. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in, in reality, it's just – for some clients, it's not even economically possible. It's not – it's just not right. realistic. And you can make it – you could be like, this is going to be as easy and it, uh, it won't hurt your wallet as as much as you think it will. And be like, nope, not going to do it. I'm like, oh, my God. And then if you do get it, I can guarantee if that client's hands-on, they're going to make a change on the live site. It's not going to match with the dev site. Too many uh -huh. cooks in the kitchen. So that happens yeah. a lot. 
Um, so yeah, what, so yeah, dev made, yeah, dev made more sense back when we were doing HTML sites because mm -hmm. you could have the dev site under um, 69.23.967.8 forward slash and then just have the same site and have that be on the dev server because all mm -hmm. you're doing is you're then just taking the page you've approved and uploading it to the exact same place on the live server. That's simple. But when you get into right. WordPress and Joomla and Drupal and other types of content management systems, it becomes a major pain in the neck. Absolutely. So with the bug squasher, so I, I, I saw that dream and I was like, oh, that's not going to happen. And then I thought, like, uh -huh. well, why can't it happen on a live site? What would it look like? I often tell the guys, like, what would this look like if we did this? And then it's, okay, let's figure this out. And so that's what we've, we figured out a way to add the bug squasher onto a live site. And what you can do is we call it whitelist IP addresses. So let's say you have a team of five and you only want them to see the bug squasher on the live site. You add their IP address to the bug squasher and only those five will see the bug squasher, meaning you can still get live traffic to your site. You don't have to turn this on at like at midnight when you think traffic's really low. You don't right. need a dev site, though if you had a dev site, that'd be the dream. Uh, you could put this on a live site that's already getting traffic. You can you can have the owner of the website at 3 p.m. be like, hey, I see a bug, let me report it, and it goes to your team. And only you guys see that bug squash. Or only you guys know this is happening. Correct. Yeah, see, that, see that's really cool. So, yeah, because one thing that a lot of our clients deal with is they do get bug reports from people who said, hey, I went to your website, I tried to buy this, and I was having this problem. And mm -hmm. then they, 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 don't, they don't really explain it in a way that a web developer would need to know. And then you have to go back to them. And a lot of times you end up on the phone with them. Yep. And sometimes you get that smart perspective client who will say, hey, I have Camtasia. Let me show you. And you say, thank God for those. Here's, yeah. another, here's <laughs> another thing. Here's, a, here's, a, here's another thing. And this is just a little tip that I'm going to give to my business creators. Uh, one of the things we teach inside the Business Creators Institute Toolkit is a set of criteria for selecting a web hosting company, and we get a lot into how to test their support and make sure that you're going to be treated right by their customer support. Uh, when we release the next version of that checklist, which is going to be very soon, we're going to be adding a line to it which says, will their technical support watch a video if you film the bug? Because I personally have dealt with companies that said, no, we won't watch your video. But then I try and explain it to them, and they're not getting what I'm trying to tell them. It's like, I filmed the yeah. video. I showed you. And you're saying, I won't watch the video? What? Oh, oh wow. So one of my requirements is, if you're working with a web hosting company, and you're on a live chat with them, or on an email, or a phone call, and they say, and you say, hey, um, I, I wanted to make this real easy for you to understand. I filmed this quick 30-second video so you can see the problem. If they don't say, sure, send it over so I can watch it right now, find a new host. Yeah, absolutely. You want communication to be as easy as possible with everybody you talk with. So look for those signs and run if, if there's, like, issues, if they don't want to take that extra step to watch the video. Now, that's just right. blows my mind that, that you've experienced that. Okay. Well, we're about halfway through here, and I said I was going to do this at the end, but I know our listeners are um, probably thinking, what's going on with these two techie guys talking tech stuff? Let's have some fun. Uh, you've done some interesting marketing with the bug squasher, so I want to use a, a case study example of marketing here. And uh, you've told me you've done a few very interesting things I think our business creators can learn from, so if you want to share those. And you also mentioned something about a video of some sort. Oh yeah. Okay. So, and I'm raising your voice like Stewie Griffin, like got a little video there. We playing a little video. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so we made a rap video that's gotten over. It's been out for about three and a half weeks now, and it's gotten over twenty thousand views on YouTube. Um, it's gotten more on Facebook. It's gotten views on Twitter as well. And so I'll tell you the story of how it all began. Uh, Treehouse Fifty One. So Treehouse Fifty One is a digital ad agency. We do marketing for brands all over. And, you know, when you do marketing for brands, you can't always do what you want to do. You have to respect that right. brand voice, you know. Um, yeah. they've, they've taken a long time to establish who they are, and you have, to, you have to honor that as best as you can. And so we've done different forms of marketing. Usually clients come to us for website, PPC, video promos, those type of services. So when we were doing the bug squasher, uh, I told the guys, I'm like, I want to do something just – really different with how we do marketing because it's us. 
you know, it's, it's, I see you guys all the time and my friends were like, what would we do if there wasn't anybody to say like, no, you can't do this. You know, what would that look like? And I just told everyone, just think about it. Just think about it. You know, we'll throw ideas. There is no wrong idea, no path we can't go down. And so the guy's thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Um, and what happened was I was, uh, there's a target where I live uh, not too far. And we, my wife and I would drive by it all the time. And there's this kid there and he's always selling rap CDs. And I probably saw this kid there for like a good month just selling his CDs. And then I just stopped and we were going into Target and I stopped and I tell my wife, oh my God, I have to make a rap video. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, no, the, the universe is telling me I need to make a rap video for the bug squasher. And she's like, you're crazy. And I'm like, that's not the point. I'm crazy, yes, but we're going to make this rap video. And so I didn't hire that guy, but I actually, we went on this mission and we talked to over 20 different rappers and I found this guy who was really nice, really talented and I told him um, what the vision is and what we're doing. And he's like, all right, so you're going to pay me to do this? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's let's have some fun. And so we worked with him, and we made this rap video. We put it up on YouTube, and it just it just blew up. Over 20,000 views. It's Nice. Um, the, whole, the whole objective of it is to really just establish this brand voice of, you know, we're, we don't take ourselves too seriously. This is super creative. Uh, you learn about what the Buck Squasher is and – uh, it's it's memorable. So I've had a lot of people actually me uh, message me being like, that was a lot of fun. I like it. And I get what you guys are doing. I get what's going on here. So, and that's been super exciting. It's gotten to the point now where people are asking, what's the next video you're going to make? So we're still up in the air. Should we do like a country song, a gospel song, a mariachi song or something? So we're still having some fun with like, what should we do next? But people have been asking us. They want to see some more. I love that. Uh, you say it's on YouTube. Uh, just so our yeah. users can search for it, if you could just give us the title of that video. All you have to do is uh, go on YouTube and search The Bug Squasher Rap Song, and it'll pop up. You'll see a picture of the Statue of Liberty as the thumbnail. And so that's kind of sets the stone for what we got going on here. Oh, I'm, I'm real quick here, real quick, because we got time. The Bug Squasher YouTube, <laughs> you know, the Bug Squasher rap video. Yeah, rap video, rap song should pop up. Okay, I, I just spelled rap wrong. Hold on. Squash them bugs. <laughs> there it is. That's what it's there called. There it is. Oh, okay. Um, I don't want to take up our listeners' time. So, folks who are listening, wait 30 minutes and then go watch it. We still have some stuff to cover here with Kirk, and we only have an hour of his time. So, um, so uh, here's um, here's the next thing uh, I'd want to ask. And again, I'm looking to use this as sort of a case study for business creators. And I love learning lessons from people who actually do it. So you've got a great thing going with the bug squasher here. Now, if you could do things differently with this launch, what would you change? I think. What we would do differently is we would start sooner some of the uh, the outreach that we've been doing. So I always tell my clients, go on podcasts. I think podcasts are incredible. I think they're so underutilized. Yeah. They're, they're blowing up. Yeah. I always talk to people who are like, hey, I just listened to this podcast. And I, I hear it all the time all around. So I'm always telling clients, find a podcast, go on a podcast. You know, it's great exposure. It's great SEO. It's great content. And let's be real, like blogs are great. Uh, but there, you need somebody to write it, and so that's demanding. And people don't always read what you write, you know. So people listen yeah. to podcasts when they're driving to work, when they have some downtime. Like it's it's sure. a great channel. So I I think for myself, this is just with the bug squasher. I'm finally eating my own medicine. I've been reaching out, team and I, trying to get on different podcast shows, and we've been seeing yeah. you know just positive results. Uh, everything we do, we measure. So we have been seeing growth for the Buck Squasher SEO-wise, and it's only coming from podcast shows. So if you have the yeah. opportunity, definitely look into your niche, find people, reach out, make those connections. Um, we're not doing anything special. We're just sending out, like, uh, here's a cold email. Here's what we're about. Here's our product. Yeah. Uh, is this something that might be interested in? Word of advice, um, don't send, like, those cold emails to people who aren't relevant to you. So that's kind of like really tempting. Right. Try to be like niche specific. So you'll have you'll have yeah. higher conversions if it's somebody who's at least in your space. So 
So I yeah. definitely, definitely highly recommend doing that. And then from there, what do you do when you get the podcast? Well, for God's sake, make sure that you share it. I see so many times with yeah. the clients who do our clients who do do podcast shows, we're like, hey, did, did you share it on Facebook? Did you tell your friends? And they're like, no, why? And I'm like, what do you mean, why? <laughs> Come on. So you've got to go that extra step. You know, write a blog about it. Share it on Facebook. Have a throwback Thursday. Put it on Instagram. Make sure you bring that content back and you share it. So it's not just on the podcaster to share this content. It's on you, too. This is, this is your baby you're trying to get out there. So make sure that you get yeah. it out there. Yeah, let me uh, let me add a couple things to that because you showed up on Business Creators Radio Show because you went right to our website at businesscreatorsradioshow.com. And by the way, for our listeners, what I'm doing here is called seed-based marketing. Pay attention. Uh, you went right <laughs> to businesscreatorsradioshow.com. You saw where it's fast and easy to apply now. You filled out the form. I got it. And, uh, you know, a couple times a week I go through all the applications we get. And I usually accept about 60% of them, give or take. And I saw this one, and I'm thinking, okay, what's this exterminator dude want? And as, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this episode. And uh, then I looked into it a little bit. It's like, oh, we're, we're having this one on. So don't overthink who you're going to approach. Understand the shows and the outlets that are in your niche. Understand as much as you can who listens to them, who can become your prospective clients once they hear your from you about your brilliance and passion, how you help others win at the game of business and marketing, but be, just get out there and do it. And podcasting is one of the most easiest and fun ways to grow your business. Because uh, look, Kirk, what are you what are you doing? You're you're promoting the bug squasher, and you and I are, we're just sitting here having a chat. That's all we're just is. talking, having it's, a it's conversation. Something, Other yeah, people are listening every to. Day. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to write anything, although you may decide. Uh, you, I mean. You may decide, let's say you do, maybe this show is the one, maybe it's another one you do, and you say, oh, man, you say to yourself, self, I really hit those Sonal the Park. So you download that MP3 like you can do from our site once the episode goes live. You download the MP3, you subscribe to it on YouTube, to have been downloaded, and you send it to a transcription company. Uh, we recommend a company called ZoomScribe because I'm an advisor to it, so I recommend ZoomScribe. They're great. Very reasonable, very fast turnarounds. You get that bad boy translated. Then if you want to do blog posts or you need snippets to preload into your Twitter using your Meet Edgar or your Hootsuite or what have you, it's right there for you. And if you're working on a book, for instance, or you're working on a special report, then just talking it out, having a conversation, and getting it transcribed is a heck of a lot easier than staring at a Microsoft Word document after you've already cleaned the gutters, uh, donated everything out of the garage, and scrubbed the carpets trying to avoid having to write. And uh, and there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's surprising. Um, there, I have had conversations with clients who I've recommended, you should go on a podcast. You have a great product. And then they're just they're just like, oh, I don't know. You want me to go on a podcast? I don't know. It just feels so weird and bizarre. It's like you're just talking. You're just, you do this every day. Yeah. You, you're just going to talk to somebody. You don't even have to – you're not even recording. You don't even need the gear. You just need headphones or a mic or something, but you're just talking. This is nothing new for you. So yeah. It is, it is yeah. a really, really great marketing solution. It's really underutilized. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, a lot of right. clients who we do SEO for, we recommend it, and they see positive results. And Like I said, I'm seeing positive results with the bug squasher, so we are measuring that. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what else I recommend is uh, if you're doing your social media, have some fun with your social media. I mean, uh, one of the vetting processes I go through before I bring somebody on the Business Creators Radio Show is I check out their social media. I'm going to have to send you connection requests because, Kirk, I mean, you just seem like a cool guy. I'm looking at some of your social profiles right now, and I'm thinking, wow, this is a guy I'd like to get to know. I'm looking at your Facebook. There's a picture of you behind the wheel of a boat and then there's one that looks like you're flying a helicopter and uh you know you're just loving life there's a picture of you with your lovely wife and you guys are exploring and and uh you know i look at your mutual friends we have one mutual friend as of right now and our mutual friend is somebody who's also been on the business creators radio show one of our great guests we've gotten a lot of feedback on and uh you know have fun be helpful be entertaining and as i've also taught in one of my own modules if you want to get political, do it positively. I recommend you not do it at all, but if you do it, be positively. And just be a person that if somebody were to go to your social media profile and say, 
I'm going to host this person on my podcast, and they're going to share the episode that they do on my show. I want the stuff around that social share to be other engaging stuff because I want to be seen hanging out with the positive, awesome people in the world. Absolutely. That's great advice. Yeah, so again, I, and I love and I love that you zero in on some simple effective strategies right there. So, um now, you know, I see a I see a lot of uh clients um I see a lot of clients. It's really if you're looking for a reason to say no, you'll find it. I guarantee it. I see it happen right. all the time. Uh one reason I see people say no a lot is that they say like I don't have the gear. I don't have the equipment. Uh I don't this isn't perfect. This isn't ready to go out there. You know, what if it fails? Um, the worst thing you can do is not do anything and just be on standby and wait for things to happen for you. Some of the um, I tell clients too, like you should you have a cell phone, go on YouTube, make videos. It doesn't have to be you know this Hollywood production. Just create content. Just get in the habit of making stuff and getting out there, and you'll see growth. Yes, there's going to be people who are going to say this is crap, this is not good, this was not ready. But you should learn from that. You should be able to take those hits and be like, okay, what can I do differently? Uh, it's all about you know just creating stuff, learning from it, tweaking as you go. Yeah, and you know, you know the same principle applies to a lot of things. Like let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna stick on uh, this whole politics on social media thing for a minute before you go off sharing memes and posting negativity and stuff like that. Find a friend who has a profile who regularly posts interesting topics. And look at the people who regularly jump in, his circle of friends or her circle of friends. And look for a place where you have a lot of divergent views and they have great discussions where they offer counterpoints, they go back and forth respectfully, and maybe they even have some fun with it. And go there and practice your message because if you're not expressing it very well, they'll politely call you out on it. If you're doing it very well, you'll see engagement. And that's the same with your business. If you're not 100% sure, as you say, Kirk, whether you have the equipment, best thing to do is get in discussion groups, get on social media, get on podcasts, and put it out there. Because the only way you're going to find out if somebody's going to buy your stuff is to say, here's my stuff, buy it. I don't know any more effective way to find out if somebody's going to buy it. Right. Right, Absolutely. That's just me. Facebook, uh, Facebook groups are a good channel. Uh, I know Facebook's going through so much right now. Uh, but Facebook groups are a really good channel to um, find p people who are relevant to your niche and product and be like, hey, what do you guys think about this? Uh, the secret there is don't sell. Don't be like, what do you think about this product? It's only five ninety nine. The secret there is to be like, I'm genuinely looking for advice and feedback here. So if you don't want to share that with your friends, you know, if you have that fear, go find that Facebook group. They're super easy to get into. Leave a comment, and yeah. people will give you feedback. So, Yeah, very, very, very true. Very, 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 very true. Another thing I found is, you know, pose things as a question. Kirk, you know how some people go on social and they complain about how awful their day is and how their life sucks and everything? You, you see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and, and 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 when I see that, it makes me reach for the unfollow button. But <laughs> but uh, here here's here's how I handle it, and I've tested this, and it works. Uh, every once in a while, I mean, Kirk, you're you're a, a, you're a guy, you're a regular guy. I'm a regular guy. We both have days that are just start to finish, nothing but a crap storm. So oh, I was yeah. having one of those days, and I posted on. I said, you know what? From the moment I woke up this morning, it's been nonstop, A, B, C, crap storm, garbage, unbelievable, just bullshit. And so, uh, knowing that most of you have days like this as well, what are some of your techniques for resetting things and ending on a win? And that thread went on for two days, and uh, a couple people made some great connections as a result of it. So you're letting people know you're human. And at the same time, you're inviting them to be part of the conversation about how to make things better. That's so clever. I have a, I have a friend, an old college friend, and in college he was such a negative Nancy. He could make a he could make his birthday be like, oh, this is terrible. I'm a year older. I'm dying. <laughs> just everything yeah. he just makes so negative. And to this day, he posts stuff on Facebook where all of his statuses are just so depressing and negative. And he's a good guy. Like he's not suicidal or anything. He just right. makes everything seem like really gloomy. And it got to the point where I was like, uh, 
man, I can't defend this guy, so I, I just have to deal with it, I have to ignore it. And then good old Mark Zuckerberg introduced the snooze button. So I've, I've had this guy uh-huh. on the news for – it's funny that you bring this up. I had this guy on the news for months. And, like, every, like, okay, it's, it's still sad. Snooze for another 30 days. Snooze for another 30 days. And, actually, uh, the snooze right. thing just ended yesterday. Just another sad, depressing comment. And I'm like, damn it, man. <laughs> Pull yourself together. So another yeah. snooze. <laughs> Exactly. So the point I think we're trying to make here, and we're and Kirk, what's interesting is we're squashing bugs here. We're helping to debug <laughs> people's social media presence to make them to make them appealing to podcast hosts. Really cool. Not only are we fixing websites, we're fixing social media profiles. How, how does it get better than this? I mean, is there any place where you get more divergent topics that add even more unannounced incredible value than the business creators radio show? It's amazing. Uh, and I and I, th- and I think and I think what we're speaking to is a mindset. And I think that's part from what I'm seeing, part of what I'm perceiving is having driven you to create the bug squashers, looking for a way to shift the conversation about something that can stymie all of us and make it into a collaborative effort where we come together to support each other. Absolutely. I mean, what we're seeing now with the bug squasher um, before launch, we were using it internally with our clients and we use them as like testing, like, hey, would you want to try it? We won't charge you. There's no gimmicks. You know, this is just something we're doing. And we had such a positive feedback just because, like, we pride ourselves on how can we make this communication as easily as possible. And you'd be surprised how much you can communicate to somebody without talking to them, you know. There's sure. so many things that get lost in messages, so many things where you say something and it's just like, oh, wow, you said that on Facebook? You, you put that in an email? So uh, the bug squasher, a, a big core belief of ours is how can we just keep conversation? How can we streamline it and keep it simple for everybody? And so far, it's 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 going really well. People are people are happy to talk to us without talking to us. So I I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what I think is also great about this is. We're in an era of, of instant communication. Social media, in particular, has gotten, to a, gotten us to a point of instant gratification. I speak in one of my books about how social media has been a great democratizer to help voices that might not have been heard before get heard. Every single one of us is a potential news network. Um, and when we have that level of we want instant service, I mean, it's to the point where we order something online that's going to take three days to get here. Well, what am I going to do for three days? I'm going to die. Or my internet's yeah. down? It's been two minutes. Oh, no, what's going to happen? Ah! <laughs> and what I love about the bug squasher is that when we have these issues about bugs and things that might be hard to find or hard to articulate, you've created a process that streamlines that conversation. So if I come to a site and I'm having a problem, I hit the button, I report it, and it's fixed. There you go. You you. And there's this other side to it, too, that we haven't touched on too much, but it's how do you – Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's do it. How do you – once you get that bug, what do you do with it? So um, right. you have a team. You have – the client's still going to say, like, hey, I sent you the bug. What's the status? What's going on there? So you still need to be ready for those things. So we do have – within the bug squasher, we do have reporting links, and we have two different links, one that you could be like, here, client check it out. Here are all the bugs you submitted. Here are the statuses. If we have questions, it's right here. And then we also have a private link for internal for your team. So I know you'll get this. Sometimes bugs will happen and you don't want to tell the client, hey, your website has AIDS and this is going to be really bad. We need time to figure it out. You don't want to to share that with them yet. You want to be able to say like, I think your website's sick and here are the steps we're going to take to fix it. Here's the solution we're coming to. So, and that's completely normal when you're working with clients and a developer, developer. So we do have that where you have two different report links, one for internal and one that you share with the client. And then there's the whole management side. We don't get you on stuff like um, a lot of project management systems say, like, okay, we have a free version, and but if you add two people, it's $400. So there's a lot yeah. of stuff like that. With us, everything is just really, really basic. It's just you can have as many yeah. people as you want. You don't have to worry about that. So you can – have your entire team on there. You can assign tickets. You can have it uh, be emailed to yourself. You can have it. Uh, you can set it up. We have videos on YouTube that show you how to like connect it to like Asana and stuff. If yeah. you want to use that too, or if you don't want to get rid of your other project management system. So it's all about the future. 
is all about, I think, immediate communication, immediate satisfaction, and getting 10 steps ahead of what you already know. You already know, I've never seen a website that doesn't have problems. I've never completed a website and been like, here you go, client, we're done, and I will never talk to you again. Never in my entire life, and I've worked on a lot of sites. Yeah, there's always, hey, you did such a good job, or maybe you did a bad job, or a mediocre job, or whatever, doesn't matter, but there's something else I want to add to the site. How can we do it? There's always that next thing. There's always the evolution of the site. A site is always, always changing. And the bug squash are just like, that's just another tool where it just doesn't have to be for bugs. It could be for how do we add this tool on this page? How do we change this page to add blah, blah, blah? So you got to think about the future. This this stuff, is, uh, this shouldn't be a surprise for a lot of people. This should be something where yeah. I think in the future it's going to be an expectation. It's going to be – I my vision for the Bug Squasher is that this is the standard. When you are a developer working with a client, you have the Bug Squasher, and this is how we communicate. Because right now the, the one thing all of us have in common is time, and we're wasting so much time with emails. Unfortunately, your oh. bug probably, your pro- probably isn't worth an email. It probably is worth a click. True. So let me let me translate this to another thing in the real world. And we see this a lot. Like, let's say you live in a community, whether it's a condo community or an apartment community or whatever it is. And I deal with this a lot at the place where I live right now. And I live in a great community. I've been here for several years. But the thing that frustrates me, and I've sadly gotten a little upset over it and taken that frustration out a little bit. Again, I'm a real guy, and I'm telling you I'm a real guy, is we're constantly having problems with the damn swimming pools around here. And it's and it's Las Vegas. It's 115 degrees out right now. It's 95 degrees at night. We want to swim, but the damn pools keep breaking down. So, and I bring this up again and again and again. What frustrates people is that these, that they go to, they want to take a swim and they see that the, that the gate is chained up so they can't get in. But what's going on? How long is the pool going to be down? What's wrong with it? And I suggested several times, the simple solution is to take your beautiful your beautiful website you have for this community and add this thing called a bulletin board to it. Uh, you can simply use something like V Bulletin, which is mobile responsive. It's one of the standards. It's been around forever in a day. And you can have threads like you can have like a section in that V Bulletin that says ongoing maintenance issues, subsection swimming poles. And when you when you have to close a pool down, somebody just types in real quick. The pool will be closed down because we discovered the filtering system has broken down. Uh, maintenance has been called. And the difference is if that pool stays closed for a week and there's no communications, people are going to get pissed. But if they see that every day you're saying maintenance was here, we had to order a part. Maintenance tried to fix it. We found this other problem. Sure, people are still going to say, damn, I'd like to swim. But they're also going to say, at least you're letting us know every day what's going on. And we don't even have to ask you. We don't have to send an email. We don't have to stop by the office. We can click and see today's update. Okay, so yeah, oh God, the damn thing's going to be down for three more days, it looks like. You said it was going to be open yesterday. But I understand you found out there was an electrical short. We get it. Think how much easier that would be. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience, your clients will love you for it. So we have so many clients who are just, thankful or it's just like this is they know the experience they're going to get they know that people have heard of horror stories working with ad agencies and freelance developers and all of that in between stuff so and the biggest thing to you know the difference between a, a good example a good developer and a bad one is communication you know what does that communication yeah. look like and guess what um, something breaks it's not the client's fault it's your fault so how do you fix that it doesn't matter yeah. if it's their site. It doesn't matter if it's their code. It's on you. So all of us, like, have variations of this. So it's so important to be prepared, you know, deliver that five, ten-star experience. The client's never going to forget. They'll thank you for it, and they'll recommend more stuff to you. It's just it's just the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's very true. And I'm going to keep working on getting them to put a bulletin board on the website. I mean, and to me – uh, you can lock that down for community members only. You could even leave it publicly open. And then prospective tenants are going to say, whoa, this is a pretty damn cool 
this is a pretty damn cool management company here. They really communicate. So, because I, as I say to people all the time, um, when I'm looking at reviews, like let's say, uh, you know, Kirk, you have, you have, let's say for example, your company's on Yelp. I'm not sure if it is, but let's say it is. And, mm -hmm. you know, you have a, I'm going to look for a company that has a rating of about 4.3 out of 5. I don't want the five star company. And I'll tell you exactly why. Because if, you, if it's five stars and all your reviews are positive, your reviews are bullshit. It's probably you've got a bunch of people you know to go and type nice stuff about you. I want to see that overall people have specific reactions that they say, well, my experience with, uh, with the bug squasher was 99% perfect. I wish they would have done this one thing. Or if somebody goes on there and they give you a one-star rating and you jump in and you say, Wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. And then you do what you just said. You list the steps that are being taken. Or if you find somebody and you think they're just a troll that likes to complain, you say, look, we, we care. And here's our office number. We're open from this time to this time. Ask for me. My name is Kirk. I want to speak with you about this and make you satisfied. Now, if they call you and you have a chance to make them satisfied, you've got to win. But if they don't, then you actually win because you expose them as somebody who just likes to complain, doesn't want to solve problems. Other people will see you defending your business that way and will respect that. I actually have a story. I agree with everything you're saying. I have a story where a few years back, one of my first clients I ever had, uh, I told him, like, you should get on Yelp. Uh, you have Google Analytics. You're getting all this traffic from Yelp. You're not really doing anything on there, and you got reviews. And so the guy went on and he looked on Yelp and he had a negative review and he lost it. I remember he he called me, it was like eight at night and he's like, what's going on? And just freaking out. And and then I'm like, you know, let's try to talk to him, trying to figure everything out. And then he goes, I've already contacted my lawyer. He's going to reach out to this guy, send a cease and desist, remove this. And it was just like, oh, you're doing, you're doing what? And I'm like, no, 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 no. And so like we talked for a while and I said, this is your opportunity to be like, hey, yes. be, be, how do you turn this negative situation into a bad, or sorry, into a good situation? This happens more often than not. Not everybody is going to love what you do. There's going to be haters out there. But that doesn't mean they have to, like, go die and you got to sue them and just get rid of them. you got to right. talk to them. Like, put in that effort, especially if you own a business. Um, it's kind of – owning a business is a lot of customer service, you know, you want people to buy your product. You want to give them that good service. So with that particular client, we talked about it, and he's like, all right, Kirk, I'm going to send this person a message. And I worked with him with the message because I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so he sends him this message. Not only did the guy change the review, but he came back and he got more business out of it. So this, these are the things you have to do. Um, uh, it's so, so important. Those negative situations, those negative times, they will happen. You yeah. can guarantee there's going to be people who are pissed. Uh -huh. So don't run from it. Don't bury it. Uh, go after it head on. And Yelp. Yelp yeah. is a – Yelp is a yep. – oh, no, go ahead. Let me give let – me give, we have two minutes. Let's give one 30-second example. I was at a restaurant a few months ago and got awful service. I was there with some friends of mine. And uh, they didn't listen to me when I tried to resolve it on site, so I left them a really bad review. I didn't want to bash them. I wanted them to hear me. Now, had they said, sir, wow, we're really sorry about this. Um, can you please come back and let us show you that we care and give you a good experience? I would have gone back. I would have let them give me a great experience. I would have changed the review to a five-star. Instead, what they did is they found my friend who uh, does events at that restaurant, and they threatened him they wouldn't host his events unless I took my review down. What do you think my wow. thought is about that restaurant? What do you wow. think my thought is? My thought is I yeah. will tell everybody. I mean, I took the review down to protect my friend, but I also told my friend, I'm going to bash these people every chance I get, and you can't stop me. And he understood that as well. Yeah. Wow. That's super, yeah, super so sketchy. It's, 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 so e it's so easy to just address it head on and turn a hater into a lover. And with that, I think we've squashed so many bugs here. I just want to make sure everybody knows, um, Kirk, uh, they will go to your website, www thebugsquasher.com. They're going to play your demo video that's on the front page of the site. They can see how this works, and they're going to go to YouTube and look up the Bug Squasher rap video and be entertained. There you go. Those are the ways to, get to find the Bug Squasher. All right. Well, Kirk Days, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been an honor and quite an education.
Thanks for having me. I had a blast. All right, for everybody listening, this is Adam Homie, host of the Business Creators Radio Show. Please check out our previous and upcoming episodes at www.businesscreatorsradioshow.com and on iTunes, where we help you win at the game of business and marketing so you thrive from the intersection of your brilliance and passion. Until next time, have a great day. Take care.